Hey there, this video is going to be all about the dynamic range of the Nikon Z6 Mark III. Now in this video I'll be comparing the dynamic range of the Z6 III with cameras that I own, such as the Blackmagic 6K full frame and the Canon R5C. But before we get into it, I just have to have a huge thank you to b &H Photo who lent me the Z6 III to test, review, and make videos like this for all of you. So if you're looking to pick up some camera gear, go check out b &H. I highly recommend shopping there. There are links in the description for the Z6 III and all the gear that I use on a regular basis. So again, huge thank you to b &H for making videos like this possible. Okay. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, there are three ways that I recommend testing for dynamic range. And the first one is just looking at a shot of a scene that has a lot of dynamic range. I usually do this. I put myself in a dark room next to a bright window and try to see how much dynamic range a camera can capture. Then we'll also take a look at the latitude test, and this is also known as a push-pull test. There's a lot of misconceptions about this. This isn't to see if you can over or underexpose an image by five stops. It's really about observing the characteristics of the highlights and shadows at the extreme ends of the camera's dynamic range. And when you do that, we're gonna take a look and see how the noise and the colors look. Now, the third way you can test dynamic range is with a computer test, and that's done with the Zyla 21 and the Image Test software. I don't currently have the capabilities of doing that. I don't have that equipment. Hopefully I will at some point soon, but uh, you know, we're gonna be looking at the first two and taking a look and seeing how these cameras compare against each other. Now for the testing parameters, I use the same lens on all the cameras, the, my Sigma 28, and I have all the proper adapters here for all the cameras. Now, when I bring these images into the computer, I use the conversions in the raw tab and resolve and color space transforms to get the images into rec 709 but still in a log profile and then I grade them manually by hand to just get the exposure contrast and saturation to match between the different images. I'm not going for color matching here. I'll cover image quality and color and all that kind of stuff of the Z63 in future videos. But remember all of these tests that you're seeing throughout this video are presented here in a 4k timeline. So there are a lot of recording modes, resolutions, and codecs in the Z6 Mark III, way too many to cover in this video. So I had to choose just a few to compare in this video and the ones that I decided I think that make the most sense for these basic comparisons. I will take a deeper dive into the raw codecs and how they compare with the ProRes and the H.265 in the Z6 Mark III in future videos. So make sure you keep a lookout for that. So in the Z6 III, the highest quality mode is one of the ways I recorded, which is the 6K NRAW in the high quality mode. The R5 5C, I shot in the 8.2K RAW ST, and in these two cameras, I also shot in their most compressed 10-bit codecs, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And of course, with the Blackmagic, I shot in B-RAW because that's the only way you can shoot in the Blackmagic 6K full frame. So the first way to look at dynamic range is look at a shot that has a lot of dynamic range, one that's really challenging for any camera to capture. And like I said, it's me in a dark room next to a bright window. And the way that I do this is exposed for the highlights. I bring up the exposure as high as I can without clipping, and then I just raise the shadows in post to see what's going on. First up is the Nikon versus the Canon, both in their highest quality RAW formats. I think the highlights look slightly better on the R5C. If you look out through the window, look at the railing and the deck, they look a little bit better on the R5C. The shadows look cleaner on the R5C with less noise, but you get that horizontal banding that sometimes shows up on the R5C. And zooming in, both have a lot of chroma noise, but the Nikon has this intense, green colored noise, whereas the R5C has a more of a mix of colors and it definitely looks like the image is a little bit more green in general. You can definitely see this on my shirt and on my face, that more intense green chroma noise on the Z6 Mark III. So looking at that quick test, I would say that the R5C does a little bit better on the highlights and a little bit better in the shadows, but we'll verify this later with the latitude test. Next, we'll look at the 10-bit compressed codecs. Now, these both have noise reduction built in, and in the Z6 III, you can't turn it off and you can't change any of the parameters. So what I did was I just left the R5C to its default noise reduction settings to keep it fair. So in the Nikon, we'll take a look at the 4K H.265 10-bit codec. That's 420 long op. There's also a 5.4K mode, which I'll explore in a later video, but I wanna to try to keep it fairly similar, and this is in a 4K timeline. For the R5C, I shot in the 4K XFABC, which is a 422 long op. Now, the Nikon Z6 III can also record in ProRes 422HQ, which has built-in noise reduction as well. The RAW modes in both cameras do not have noise reduction. So this is the Z6 III against the R5C and their compressed codecs, the H.265 10-bit and the XFABC. Now, the highlights look slightly better on the R5C here, just as they did in the RAW, which makes sense because the noise reduction isn't really gonna affect the highlights. Now, the noise reduction on the R5C is cleaning up the shadows a lot, other than that, that banding, of course, and the noise reduction on the Nikon is definitely helping here. Now, zooming in, there's still a lot of noise in the Z6 Mark III, 
but the noise gets blockier and smearier and the R5C seems to be holding color a little bit better in the shadows. So we'll definitely take a look at this more in depth with the latitude test, but you can definitely see the effects of noise reduction going on here with both cameras. Here we'll take a look at the Nikon Z6 III comparing its NRAW against the H.265 10-bit codec to see if there's any differences here in dynamic range, noise reduction, effects, all that kind of stuff. I think the highlights look very similar and overall not too much of a difference between the two images. My shirt looks like a slightly different color from the chroma noise. Now zooming in, similar to what we saw not zoomed in, very similar image between the two. You can see the effect of the noise reduction here though. I would say that the RAW and the H.265 10-bit have similar dynamic range, but with NRAW, of course, you can control the noise reduction in post and potentially get a cleaner image. Next, we'll take a look at the Nikon Z6 III against the Blackmagic 6K full frame in their highest quality RAW format. So 6K NRAW HQ against B-RAW with three to one compression. Overall here, I think the, the highlights look fairly similar looking outside, but looking into the shadows, it's drastically different, both in terms of noise and color. And zooming in, you can see how much better the Blackmagic 6K full frame looks in the shadows here in terms of noise, color, and sharpness. Because they were similar in the highlights, but there's definitely an advantage here for the shadows for the Blackmagic, I would definitely say that the Blackmagic has more dynamic range than the Nikon Z6 III. Next, we'll move on to the latitude test, also known as the push-pull test. The way I do this is I expose the cameras using a gray card based on the manufacturer's recommendations. So for N-Log, I set the Zebras to 95, which is a scale of 0 to 255. I've covered this in several other videos. I got that information from Nikon. I used false color on the R5C and the Blackmagic 6K full frame. I then over or underexpose the image by adjusting the aperture and then adjust the exposure in post. Now, when I was using the raw clips, I used the raw exposure controls. And then when I was using the non-raw clips, I just adjusted them manually. First up is the Z6 III against the R5C in their highest quality RAW formats. This is the overexposure test. And generally when I'm testing cameras, most cameras are good through about four stops over, but what happens at five stops is really gonna be the interesting part to determine how these cameras compare against each other. So here are four stops, they both hold really well, but once you hit five stops, you'll see that the R5C definitely holds a little bit better, which definitely confirms what I was seeing through the window outside on the first test. Now on to the underexposure test. Here they are at zero stops and both look fine one stop under. At two stops, we start to see the chroma noise kick in. Slightly worse on the Z6 III. There's more chroma noise and you know, there's more green on the Nikon, more of a mix of colors on the Canon. Both are pretty horrible at four and five stops under. So I'd say a slight advantage to the R5C here in the shadows. So overall the R5C, I would have to say, definitely has slightly more dynamic range than the Z6 III because we see a little bit better in the highlights and just a little bit better in the shadows. All right, so let's take a look here at the overexposure test of the Nikon Z6 III against the Blackmagic 6K full frame. This is in their highest quality RAW format. So the 6K NRA HQ and the B-RAW with three to one compression. Nothing really that interesting to see here. Both cameras do fine through four stops over. And once you hit five stops, they both start to break as expected. So dim similar dynamic range in the highlights. Now onto the underexposure test between these cameras. Like with the R5C comparison, they're both good with going one stop under. Once you hit two stops under though, the Blackmagic is definitely much cleaner. And three stops, you can see a clear difference. And four and five stops, both are bad, but still see that the Blackmagic performs better in the shadows. So the Blackmagic 6K full frame has significantly more dynamic range in the shadows with similar highlight performance. So I have to give an advantage to the Blackmagic 6K full frame over the Z6 III in terms of dynamic range. Lastly, I wanted to look at the Nikon Z6 III in terms of the NRAW versus the H.265. So the big difference here will be in noise reduction, which we will see in the shadows. So looking at the highlights, I don't anticipate there being too much of a difference here. Like we said, like I said before, four stops over, it looks fine. At five stops, I think they look very, very similar here. So not much of a difference in the highlights. Now onto the underexposure test to see how the noise reduction plays a factor here. Now one stop under, I think they both look very similar here, but once you hit two stops under, and as we get further underexposed, you'll start to see more of a difference in the noise patterns with the H.265 looking blockier and smearier and the NRAW being finer. And at five stops under, the H.265 almost looks like an impressionist painting. All right, so onto my conclusions. Well, I was personally hoping for more dynamic range in the Z6 Mark III, but it lost out slightly to the R5C and it lost out a little bit more significantly to the Blackmagic 6K full frame in my test here. Now, this does not make the Z6 Mark III a bad camera, 
But like I usually do on this channel, I like to take technical deep dives into the capabilities of these cameras and compare them and report those things to all of you. I really enjoy the image coming out of the Z6 Mark III, and I captured a bunch of cool images for my first impressions video, which you should definitely check out. That video is linked down below. So more Z6 Mark III videos coming up about low light, raw, and some other cool stuff. So if you're into that, and you, or you wanna see other cool videos about cameras, make sure you hit subscribe. It'll be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.